very small. Namaste. Namaste, everybody. <laughs> We're happy you could join us. We're having a, an amazing tour and we found time to uh, stop for five minutes and we stopped in the most amazing place and that is right next to Bruce Lipton. And he's sitting there with us and uh, Bruce, thanks so much, man, for... I, I'll tell you, I am so honored to be with the both of you because obviously I'm a biology guy and life and understanding life energy and vibration and all that and recognizing how you two are enhancing life on this planet by bringing vibes that are in harmony with, with life and, and uh, this is really critical. This is why music ever went bef uh, in the golden age of Greece. They used music for healing back then. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's like that wasn't a coincidence it's a it's a reality yeah uh, and you can use music in two ways you can use it to be relaxed and bring harmony back to the system or they've got that military kind of music that marching stuff that gets the the system ready to go and face war um, I'm not into that music yeah. no yeah. <laughs> well yeah you know that's what we say it's like there's music but what we learned was music uh, to appear out of silence and then take the journey and then disappear back into a deeper silence than the one that it left that's how we see the music mm. it's uh you know and uh, with that understanding and then with the chanting of the mantras which i really want to talk to you about because i i want to get your your take on on that because as far as we know that our thing is that the way we understand mantras is that they are they are like um, they're sound bites they're, they're they're refined sound bites let's say and and over many many millennia or somewhere back in the distant past somebody was experimenting with how sound affects us and that's the first mantra and then they started to refine it till they knew how many cycles to recite this sound and they were they were so, so you know to, to talk to you about that whole area would be very interesting for me well it's kind of interesting for me because uh, uh, when I started my career as a cell biologist I was back in the world of conventional Newtonian physics that the universe has a material realm and an energy realm and what's made out of matter is not really affected by the energy realm that was the old story but when I started to read about quantum physics uh, and it's interesting because I was already a full professor and all of the staff all the people I knew were all Newtonian in the sense that they're the universe is a duality of matter and energy and when I started to read the quantum physics, it just blew my mind because, oh my God, uh, I, had to, I, I was just learning about it, but I realized none of my colleagues in the conventional medical world had any idea of what was going on. Uh, and uh, I love it because the, the duality that exists is just an illusion, that matter is not even, there is no such thing as matter. Uh, I love it, there's a quote from Albert Einstein that said, the material universe is an illusion, albeit a very persistent illusion, <laughs> uh, and that we buy into it. And yet, what blew me away was the fact that if you take the atom apart and we say, oh, we've got little things like electrons, protons, and neutrons, but then, when they finally were able technologically to look inside, there was nothing matter, in it. there was no physical thing. That an atom is a vortex of energy like a nano tornado, and it spins. Well, if it spins, then there's a cycle to it and every atom has a unique cycle to it and so everything vibrates okay and it's interesting because today's technology in medicine are scans cat scan pet scan mri scan i go well, what's that i said well they show the structure of the body and i go yeah but it's it's not using photons of light it's reading an energy body and when you see the energy body it's the exact same structure as the physical body that we perceive so uh, when I give lectures and try to get people to break from the belief of a material reality, I explain the first thing is this. Uh, we see matter, uh, and I joke, I say, we see matter because the lights are on. And they look at me and I go, well, the significance is this. I'm a vortex of energy. And a photon of light hitting a vortex of energy is reflected back. So you don't see the energy, but you see is a veneer of photons that are hitting the surface and coming back out. So that underneath, the, that's why in the dark, there's, there's uh, nothing you can see there. 
Uh, and, and so I get people to, to, you know, get to try to understand that an atom is not made out of matter. Every atom vibrates. And when you look at the periodic table of elements, every element has its own unique electrical vibration to it. Mm -hmm. So that all of a sudden says, um, well, how does energy interact? And that's the cool part that um, it's called interference. That energy is in waves, okay, uh, invisible waves. And uh, when you have two energies, let's say both with waves, okay, if you line up the energy so the waves are coherent with each other, then you take the value of each energy wave and add it up. And it becomes greater than the value of either of them alone. Uh, so that's called constructive interference, okay? But the other part is this. If I have a wave going up, but I send in a wave that is simultaneously going down, so one is up, one is down, but you add them together and it goes to zero. Uh, and that's called destructive interference. It cancels energy. Uh, so uh, in the public, when I try to talk about it, I say, well, you're maybe more familiar if I said good vibes and bad vibes. Uh, yeah. Good vibes uh, enhance your energy because the energy around you is in harmony and it's constructive interference. And life is energy. Well, that's, we should put that in, bottom line. No energy, no life. So when you're in a place where the energy is in harmony with you, constructive interference enhances your vitality and energy. In contrast, bad vibes is where the energy comes in and cancels your energy. Uh, and so like uh, noise canceling earphones, how do they do that? They record the sound that's coming in and then play it back just out of phase. So that as one is going up, the other is going down and all of a sudden the noise is gone and you can't hear anything all of a sudden. Well, life is energy, so uh, cancellation vibration it takes you toward death, yeah. okay? But it's a warning system because biology is intelligent, it's based on survival. So we think, oh, I'm reading the world with my eyes and sounds and all that. It's like, no, first level you read the world is energy because the system knows if the energy goes up, I'm more vital. If the energy goes down, uh, I'm going toward death. Uh, and all of a sudden it's like, this energy, which conventional biology is totally ignored because it wasn't in the, in the material realm they believe, yeah. is the primary uh, understanding of why life, life is all about energy. So no energy, no life. So the beautiful part, of course, about uh, the, the wonderful vibrations that come forth in your programs and what you create is that it is really uh, in harmony with life so when people are in the audience, they, they get more energy by being in that audience just by just sitting there and the vibrations come in and uh, through constructive interference, lift them up, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, and yeah. this, is, this is really, so there's a real thing here. It's not, oh, that's a suggestion, mm -hmm. it sounds nice. No, it's way beyond it sounds nice. It is an energy that shapes your physical realm yeah. that you perceive, physical realm you perceive. And then so, when there's so many people in the same space, that makes a difference. And yeah. There's many, like it, it gets multiplied. Uh, absolutely. You know what's interesting is because we have thoughts, and I said, well, can I see your brain activity? And he said, yeah, I could put electrical wires on your head. It's called electroencephalograph, and I read your brain activity. And that's because the electrical activity of the brain is conducted like a wire up to the skin, so you can read it. But there's a newer technology for reading brain activity. It's not electroencephalograph, it's called magnetoencephalograph. I said, well, so it reads the brain. I go, yeah, but the probe doesn't touch the head. The probe is out here, and you're reading brain function inside. Okay. Well, the moment you recognize this, oh my God, my thoughts are not contained in my head. My thoughts are broadcast back out in the field, okay? So uh, the relevance is if you get a group of people, it's like a tuning fork. Mm. You get a bunch of people in the same tuning, yeah. you amplify the energy field. So even a person who's not there walks into the field and is like, oh wow, <laughs> they don't even know what's going on, but it, it amplifies. Yeah. So it, it's a real interesting aspect that says, um, our thoughts are manifesting <laughs> the world via, via the uh, constructive, destructive interference patterns. Uh, so I'll add this one because this is like the, really the most critical understanding and it's from Albert Einstein. And the energy that we're talking about, the vibrational stuff that you can't see, whether it's music or thought or what's out there, is called the field. Mm -hmm. And here's the quote. 
the field is the sole governing agency of the particle. Particle is the material expression. The field is the governing agency of matter. So when you have thoughts and you send out a field, your vibrational field interacts with the, what we perceive as matter yeah. and either enhances it or takes it down. Oh, right. and, and, and so the relevance about that is... Is that why she knows what I'm thinking? Oh, exactly. That's a, that's a true story because the closer you are as a couple, if you listen to yes. a couple's conversation that are very yeah. close, it's like, yeah, and that. you're on the side going, what the hell are they talking <laughs> about? Like, yeah, you want to, of course, sure, at five, okay, nine. You know, it's like, <laughs> what the hell are they talking about? The energy gets picked up the closer yeah. you are. Yeah. And in fact, more, more you know, ancient civilization people didn't even have to really talk to each other because yeah. we were programmed to read the field. But yeah. children can do this, but we don't exercise it. And it's based on use it or lose it. If you exercise mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. activity, then it's functional. Uh -huh. uh, and it's really critical because then, and you do it anyway subconsciously. Yes. You can be near a person and all of a sudden feel whether you're attracted to that person or repelled by that person is when your energy is complemented with their energy, did it enhance you? Well, that feels good, I wanna be here, good vibes. Or someone who's sending off energy that's really cancellation energy takes away your energy. You stand next to them, all of a sudden you feel weak because the energy in your life is canceled. So it's the first compass in biology. Before there were eyes, before there were ears and all that other senses, the first coupling is uh, vibration. Mm. Uh, it's interesting. So, you know, when I talk about it, I say, uh, snails are, you know, they lay eggs. The baby snail comes out. There's no mother, father. There's no teacher. There's nothing there. And yet, they're free to go out in the world. And I say, well, how do they survive? And the answer is this. They only have one gauge on their mental dashboard, <laughs> an energy gauge. If they move one way and the energy drops, it says this is threatening. So they just move a direction to find where the energy gets up higher. Uh, is this plant a good plant to eat or a bad plant to eat? They, like shamans, they read the energy of the plant. So uh, they don't need an education. All they need is the prime directive. Always move toward higher energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And that's what you really master. That's I mean, that's what I love about you, 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 you as a person, <laughs> because there's so much love around you and you really, you are like a love generator. And, uh, and I find it so beautiful that you, that you have that foundation of the, of the science and the vision of the science, but you haven't lost the, the, the heart and you, and that's, I think I just have to say. Well, it, it, it was kind of interesting because the first 40 years of my life, I did not have the vibration wow. of that. Mm -hmm. And I, I was a failure at personal relationships because I didn't really read the vibes, get into the vibes and do all that. But I found out the biggest problem, and this is not just for me, I think it's the biggest problem for public in general. And that is, um, we are programmed uh, to be critical of ourselves. So when a parent is trying to get the kid to do something right, they, they act like a coach on a sports team. Mm -hmm. Come on, that's not good enough, you can do better. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, when a player is on a team and a coach says that's not good enough, you can do better, the player, older ch child, has consciousness that says, oh, the coach wants, I'm not working hard enough, I should work harder. If a child is under seven, consciousness is not functioning yet. Mm -hmm. It's record. Mm -hmm. So when a parent says that to a child under seven, mm -hmm. The child doesn't know the meaning, they just recorded the words. Mm. Not good enough, not smart enough, not lovable. Uh, mm. You know, these are the mm. things that parents say to try to mm. needle them, mm. to make them do better. Mm. But if a child is under seven, they are not conscious of what the meaning is. They just record what the parents said. Mm. So when you look back on all of us ma mainly, we grow up in a, in a very critical system, okay? Mm. And then we use that self-criticism in our life. So uh, let's say, um, I'm, you know, you're not lovable, but, you know, because the child's acting up and the parents are mad and they get like that. And I say, well, what happens if I record that? And I go, once it's recorded in the subconscious, it's now a program. Yeah. And, and then I say, well, why is it relevant? Because now I'm programmed with a personal critique of I'm not lovable. Well, what would that mean? I go, oh, my God. What it means is simply this. Someone comes up and says, I love you. And then you have to look at them and go, 
Well, they obviously don't have any quality control. I know I'm not lovable, so... Uh, and then what they'll end up doing yeah. is causing friction. Oh, wow. And when the person leaves, then they feel very satisfied because they said, I knew I wasn't lovable, and there they gone. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I had to work through this myself, but I think almost everyone has to work through this because it happened at a time before we were conscious mm -hmm. of what was being programmed. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's very difficult to... Uh, if you don't know what the program is, life looks like things are happening to you. Mm -hmm. When you understand the program, then you realize, no, you are creating this life. Uh, uh, and and uh, then to add that up, just so it's not like too new agey here at this moment, mm -hmm. uh, quantum physics is the most valid science on the planet. There is no science that has been tested more or found to be as truthful. I go, so first of all, if you want to argue with a science, generally not quantum physics, it's valid. I say, so why is it relevant? And the relevance is this. The first principle of quantum physics is consciousness is creating your life experience. So we are not victims of things, mm -hmm. we are creators. Mm -hmm. But if you don't know that, mm -hmm. uh, and, and it, because it's a subconscious, and subconscious means definition, below conscious, when these behaviors come out and we don't see them, mm -hmm. all we see is the response. So I wake up in the morning and say, today I'm going to find love, I'm going to be healthy, today's my, my great day. And then you go out there and life gets you down and you come home at 5 o'clock dragging your tail and going home and going like, well, it didn't happen today. Mm -hmm. And then I say, well, what was the consciousness behind that experience? And the consciousness is, I wanted to be successful. Mm -hmm. It didn't happen, mm -hmm. so it's not me. Mm -hmm. I'm a victim of the outside. And the truth was, oh my God, no. Yeah, you were creating this. Mm. Uh, and it's interesting because mm. new age people, old age people from a long time ago, they understood the nature of creation. Mm. It's our modern scientific world that made us victims. Your genes did it, this did it, and everybody goes, oh, I'm, you know, it's not, it's not me. How do, you, how do you see the future, Bruce? Well, the future is, uh, we're on a very a very sharp knife edge right now, Matanja. Yeah. We're on a knife edge of survival. Yeah. Uh, we're facing what is called the sixth mass extinction of life. It's actually just started to read about it in the news. I've been teaching it for 12 years, yeah. that human behavior is undermining the web of life. Well, the idea was that somehow we thought we were separate from the web of life. So, hey, so nature, you know, you, all the lions die, you could go to the zoo and see one or something, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, but it turns out, here's the, the fact, within the next few decades, we either are going to learn how to survive on the planet or we're going to be gone. Mm -hmm. NASA has already recognized within a couple of decades, it will be an irreversible loss of industrial civilization. Uh, uh, the numbers are, are scary. Mm -hmm. uh, they took a survey of how many animals were on the planet in 1970. They recently redid the survey. 62% of all that population is gone. Yeah. We're left with one third mm -hmm. of the animals. Uh, in Germany, they were, um, every year they do a survey of the insects in the national park. Uh, the last survey uh, revealed 75% of the insects are gone. Mm -hmm. That um, the way we've overfished, polluted the water, and destroyed the breeding grounds, uh, 2048 estimate no fish left in the ocean. It's like, this is like science fiction or something, mm -hmm. but it's all because of us. Mm -hmm. Nature is resilient. If we give it a shot, it will come back. But we're over, you know, you're taking more resources out of the planet than the planet has. Mm -hmm. You're going to kill the planet. And we're doing that mm -hmm. in our world today. Yeah. And do you think there's, there's, some, there's enough stuff happening that could reverse it? Well, yeah, I mean, you should see it as well as I've seen it, in a sense that when I started lecturing on this new biology back in, let's say, 1985, I could hardly get people to come into the room to listen to this stuff. Now the audience has grown and grown. And why the audience has grown? I didn't do anything different. It's the audiences are waking up. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and especially like your programs, you know, uh, it was fun to see you in Prague with, what, 1,500 or 2,000 people in, in the theater. It was like, yeah. You, you know, the, there's an awakening, perhaps more so than here. I don't, that's your experience that you would know that. Yeah. Mm. No, you know, I think uh, it's obvious that, that uh, evolution is happening. We're definitely waking up. And I think part of why we're waking up is that we are aware that it's the end, 
10 days and so we're, we're seeing life differently to the way, say, my parents saw life. Well, absolutely. There's a, a drive in every living organism from bacteria to humans uh, and it's called the biological imperative. And it's based on survival, that every organism is built in with a drive to survive. So even if you try and kill a bacterium, it's not going to go, oh, okay, kill me. Mm -hmm. It will make every maneuver possible to stay alive. Mm -hmm. So every organism reads the environment regarding threat. And now the world is waking up to the reality. They're very uneasy. They wake up, they know this is it's on the edge. We're on the edge. Mm -hmm. And, and the question is whether we wake up on time or not. And it's not like, oh, in a thousand years we'll find out. No, we'll find out within a few decades. Mm -hmm. So it's really uh, uh, wonderful that there's a rise in consciousness and a rise in support of consciousness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, so that's why I'm so honored to, to be uh, with you, especially uh, in, in concert because the tuning forks of everybody in that concert starts to go at a much higher vibration. Uh, I don't know if it's the same for you, but when I give my lectures, um, I could give a lecture for six hours straight, let's say, okay? <laughs> and I give the lecture, but when I leave the stage, I frequently have more energy on leaving the stage yeah. than I brought onto the stage. Yeah, yeah. And that's because of the construct of interference of all the tuning forks in the audience. Mm -hmm. So that we enhance each other this mm. way. Mm. Yes, yeah. same, mm. same. Quite. I mean, I bet. So I think we can travel around so much and play all the time. You know, it's like people who say sometimes, you know, but how do you do it? It's easy. You know, there's just a continual affirmation coming in a circular motion every time we open our mouths in the concerts, and it it just energizes. And there again, so I, that's the thing. If it was just songs about, I don't know, whatever, emotional content, I don't think it would sustain us in the way that, that uh, the music and the, because we've got the, these powerful sound formulas that we kind of, you know, that, that whether we're in Moscow or whether we're in Miami, it's a bubble of energy. It's not even that we get a feeling of a sense of a community outside that bubble. We're all the same. Every concert, we're all chanting words we don't know. We're not singing in Russian, we're not singing in English. We're all in this space where we're just chanting these sounds. And, uh, and you know, that, and with David's voice, the gist of vibration, you can just feel it every, every night. I used to say to David, you should take more care of your voice, you know. You should have singing lessons and, you know, and they were never could. Be. She, all, she, all she can do is just open her voice and sing the mantras and that's enough. That's enough. Yeah, it, it's quite enough and, it, and it's so wonderful <laughs> for our planet because uh, as a, you know, uh, being in audiences a number of times with you, uh, I walk out, as I said, not the, I didn't even perform, but I walk out, wow, <laughs> this is re really wonderful. It's so uh, in harmony with life. And uh, I think it's interesting because performers that are, are you know, out in a public, uh, it reminds me of a story of George Burns, an old comedian from a long time ago, Gracie Allen and George Burns. Somebody was in his dressing room before he went on a show. He had a dressing gown on, but his legs were all black and blue and all messed up. And he said, well, how, how can you perform like this? And he says, the moment I go out on that stage, there's nothing wrong with me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's an amazing feeling. It's the same with, sorry, David. But it's, <laughs> the same, <laughs> it's the same, you know. I used to think in the ashram, you know, when I got to play in the ashram, which I never played for many years, and I didn't feel I was had what it took to contribute to the music, because the music blew my mind. So it was many years before uh, I, I could actually play the music for Osho, and that was, that's another, that's another dimension. But I remember that any time I was asked to play in the, in the Buddha Hall, I, whatever I would, thought I was doing, I'd always cancel to play. Because as soon as I plugged in the guitar, I was the same as George Burns. <laughs> it was like... Plugged in. Just plugged in. 
this yep. might be a no pain, no psychological pain, whatever emotional stuff I might have been going through, whatever. And uh, it's like that now. And I think that's what keeps me going. And uh, apart from you. you well, that's another vibration that. altogether right that's here. That's another vibration to be that's doing it with your partner. Mm. Absolutely. It's amazing. I agree. That, that I always feel like that um, connection is like one of the most important things we all want to feel. We all want to feel connected. And I think that's what happens in, in our evenings that people feel connected, obviously, because we're singing together, we're creating music together. Yeah. But where does, how does our, uh, where's connection on a, on, on, on a biological level? Or where does that love connection, how does that, can, can you explain it scientifically? Well, I, I don't know, parallel? scientifically, it's just a, a... No, but is there a parallel? Oh, oh yeah, like, yeah, you it's know, just it's, it's like the, the, it's yeah. the vibration again. It's a vibration it's, yeah. of community. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why uh, the evolution is not the evolution of the individual that we're facing, it's the evolution of the community of individuals. That means we've been so separated. Mm -hmm. uh, and this has caused great harm to the system. Be uh, I remember uh, there's an author, Lewis Thomas, a long time ago wrote a book, The Lives of the Cell. And there was a quote in there that said, it was inconceivable that any organism live alone. Inconceivable, it can't happen in biology. Biology is bringing people together. And this is the evolution we have to face right now. We're, we're acting like a bunch of individuals all over the surface of the planet, but no, each one of us is the equivalent of a cell in the body of a super organism called humanity. But humanity is having a struggle right now because uh, uh, the issues are, are, well, we're in a state of self-destruction at this point. Uh, and, and this is why we have to come out of this and bring everything together and the borders have to disappear and everyone has to recognize we're all cells in the same body, mm -hmm. okay? So uh, uh, basically this is what is, is being you know, precipitated right now in a large part because of the internet. Mm -hmm. Because without an internet, everybody in their own world has you know, got their own world going. But when you're in the desert in the Sinai and you turn on, you see people in Hollywood living away, and you go, how come they got that? <laughs> uh, yeah. This all of a sudden opens their eyes that, wait, there's another way to live on this planet. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is part of the evolution. The evolution is not to make us any smarter. We're already maxed mm -hmm. that level. Mm -hmm. The next level of evolution is to take the smart individuals and bring them together. In fact, the parallel is, uh, first you create the chip, like Texas Instruments creates a chip, one chip, a watch, one chip, a watch. The same chip put in together in a community is called a computer. So each of us is like a single chip, but the, the collective nature of humanity is all of us come together. And this is why this evolution that we're seeing right now is, is going so fast. Because the more people that join together in the community, the more sharing of awareness and the more sharing uh, is the intelligence that keeps us going. So uh, the technology is, you know, I, God, I am old enough to remember when the television first came in the house. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and then I look at from that day to this day, it's like, oh my God, this evolution is just shooting up like a rocket. So some technology today might be outdated next week. Yeah. Uh, and this is a result of community. Um, the technology of human civilization is traced back to about 30,000 years ago. Uh, and they say before that, you dig up all the, you know, like around the campfire, the caves and all that, and you find the same tools, the same stuff for 100,000, 200,000 years. 30,000 years ago, there was an influx of technology, wheels <laughs> and things like that. And, and originally, the, the technology, when it first came out, like a plow, well, that's great technology. You know what? The same plow was used for hundreds and hundreds of years. And, and scientists wanted to know, well, it started out slow. The technology mm -hmm. was slow, but then it started to accelerate and mm -hmm. accelerate. And as we said now, it's accelerating so fast it changes in a few days. And it was interesting because conventional science wanted to say, well, what was it that precipitated this technology that jumped out? Well, being conventional Newtonian physical things, they said, must be a change in the brain structure or a change in genetics. So they went back and looked 30,000 years ago, same brain structure, same genetics. It was what they didn't look at. Before 30,000 years ago, people were spread too far apart. Mm. 
So if we were sitting here, I would I'd say, Mick Ten, wouldn't it be great to take a rocket and go to the moon 30,000 years ago? You go, what's a rocket and where, what is the moon? <laughs> but as people started to come together, the, they started to share awareness with each other. Yeah. And the more sharing, the greater the development. So like a, a computer took over 50,000 individuals, each with an idea of their own, to come together to create a computer. 50,000 different ideas collected together. And today, this is going at a much more accelerated rate. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, will we get our technology together before we destroy the planet? Well, that's the race that we're talking about mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I wonder if there's some questions that we... <clears throat> We have a question about the effect of chanting mantra on changing planetary consciousness. Oh, yeah, so it's more a discussion right. invitation. That's exactly what we've been. That, that's the discussion that we're having. Yeah. Uh, the more the, everything's a tuning fork. The more tuning forks in harmony, the greater the amplitude, the power mm -hmm. of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And so there's a an awakening, and and your work in chanting mm -hmm. is a major part to bring the glue that brought all those people, as you just mentioned, they're all in the theater together, but at some point, no matter where they came from as individuals, they are now working, uh, uh, you know, sending off a vibration in harmony. Mm -hmm. So that, that is the healing of this planet. Mm -hmm. the, the work you guys are involved yeah. is healing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes I, th I think if the governments knew what we're doing, they'd be, they'd be after us. Uh, absolutely, <laughs> and, and they know what we're doing. <laughs> mantra singers, you know. Well, because that's power for people, and the, the government only works when you take away power from people. Mm. Uh, and so this is a, a, a problem with government. Do, how are you with meditation, Bruce? Because um, for me, you know, that power, that's what I, I often feel like, you know, the, the, it's the feeling and the experience of uh, befriending our inner selves when we close our eyes, and there's nobody there when, you, when, when we close our yeah. eyes, for me, it's like, okay, there's no government, no religion, nothing can, t this, is, this is who I am in here. And uh, am I, is it a friendly place to be? Am I comfortable in there, sitting with my eyes closed and not moving? And for a while, it takes me a while if I settle down into, <sighs> it's good. And you know the, the the sense of physicality starts to melt away, and I feel more and more expansive. And then I don't feel anything because it's not me that's feeling anything. It just becomes, you know. And that's that. I just wonder how because when you spoke about the thing with vibration, I was realizing then there's no edges to us. No, that, that's that's, no the, edges. that's why the like curly in photography begins mm. to show no that you're there's an energy that transcends and goes outside uh, of your body, uh, uh, and so we're we're like a a crystal with many layers, and the energy layer is is continuous, and the distance for that is no distance at all, and that's why people on one side of the planet uh, can respond instantly to a person's thought from the other side of the planet. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, our illusion again of distance when there's an energy that, with the speed of energy that it's so fast that distance is irrelevant. So that is a, an answer to your question, Hannah, really, because, the, because I, I also feel like when we're chanting together, it's like the fragrance of a flower. We don't know how far out it's going, but we know something is happening where it's, it's going. Yeah. It's, something is being released. and. Uh, you know, and, and if you put your nose to the flower, you feel it. And, and I just often think, I wonder how fast this scent of this flower is going tonight, whether it's going over the whole city or, or where it's going, you know? Well, uh, uh, there, energy, that, that's the beautiful part about the energy. If you split the world into matter and energy, then all of a sudden matter has all the limitations. Here's the edge, nothing goes over here. Mm. Uh, and then there's all disconnected pieces. But when you start to recognize, no, it's not physical, there are just energy vortices, and then you start to recognize, yeah, but there is, as you just said, no border to energy, it goes on and on, then we're all interconnected. Uh, and, and this is the drive force to make us interconnected. Mm -hmm. But we have been programmed disempowered by not giving um, 
the real information as to who we really are. And there are people that know what we're talking about, but have used it to empower themselves and disempower us. So when somebody says, well, God, look at that guy. Look at all the power. Where did he get all the power? And the joke is, mm. we well, didn't get any more power than you have. You just lost your power. Mm. They didn't lose their power. Uh, and so there's a knowledge of Illuminati people, whatever. It's been ancient secret knowledge mm. of how to to manipulate the system and control us. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the programming is, uh, is people don't recognize. Uh, uh, the, the movie The Matrix. Yeah. People say, well, that's science fiction. I go, no, no, Matrix is a documentary. <laughs> Everybody's been programmed. And, and the reason is, is this. A, a child's brain just born is like a new computer. It's got an operating system, great. I can turn it on, it goes. I said, but there are no programs in it. So uh, what can you do with a computer with no programs? Nothing. So the first seven years of a child's life, the brain is not functioning at the level of consciousness. It's functioning at a lower vibration called theta. Theta is imagination. This is how children live in a real and imagining world at the same time. You know, they'll have a tea party and pour nothing in the cup and drink it and talk about how great the tea was or ride a broom, but it's a horse. That's theta. <laughs> but theta is hypnosis. Mm -hmm. and, and so how do you get your programs? So the, this is the crux of the problem. A child gets its programs by observing the parents, the siblings, and the community. Observing their behavior unconsciously. It's not Their conscious mind's not working until about seven where it becomes predominant. Below seven, it's recording how to behave. How do you behave? Well, watch your mother, watch your father, to watch the community. Those are programs that are downloaded. Uh, and then you go, well, what's wrong with that? And I go, well, 70% <laughs> of the downloaded programs are disempowering, self-sabotaging beliefs, 70%. And they're in your subconscious, and you go, well, that's okay, I'll just use my creative conscious mind. I go, that's the problem, is that um, when we think, the uh, conscious mind lets go of the control, because a thought is an inside job. So I say, uh, okay, David, tell me what you're doing at Wednesday at 2 o'clock, and if you're going to sit right here and tell me that answer, it's not out here, it's inside. So... To get the answer, conscious mind lets go of the wheel, goes inside. Subconscious is autopilot. It knows how to walk, drive the car, ride the bicycle, mm -hmm. do your job. You can sing without even thinking about it. It's a program, okay? But 70% of the programs are self-sabotaging. And here's the number, so here's a scary number. 5% of our life is coming from creative wishes, desires, conscious mind. 95% of our wow. life comes from subconscious wow. programs, primarily from other people, 70% of which are negative. And, and then you go, well, well, I would say if I was doing negative behavior, and I say, well, here's the joke, and I, I've used the same story 32 years now, same story, because it was the best one, it works. I go, you have a friend, you know your friend's behavior very, very well, and you know your friend's parent. And one day you want to volunteer to your friend and go, hey, Bill, you're just like your dad. I say, back away from Bill. Bill's going to go totally ballistic. How can you compare me to my dad? I'm nothing like my dad. Everyone else can see that Bill behaves like his dad. Yeah. How come Bill can't see it? The answer is he plays the program because his conscious mind is inside thinking. So he doesn't see the behavior coming out on the outside. Mm -hmm. And as a result, um, victim. I didn't see I was even participating. It was like, no, you were creating this whole thing. So the issue is all of us do that. All of us are Bill. And, and until we own mm. that the subconscious has been running the show 95% of the time, we are not free. We have been programmed. Mm. And, and to get freedom, you have to, to identify your program. Mm. I say, yeah, but I was being programmed last trimester of pregnancy. I was being programmed at, excuse me, at zero. I was being programmed at one, two. I say, okay, tell me, what program did you get at one? It's like, oh, I have no idea what the program was. So that becomes problematic, but now we may help people really fast. 95% of your life comes from the program. Your life is a printout mm -hmm. of your subconscious programs. Mm -hmm. So look at your life and go, the things you like that come into your life, they come in because you have a program to acknowledge that, okay? But then here's the one. Anything you work hard at, 
struggle over, sweat over, put a lot of effort in while you're working so hard, inevitably that destination is not covered in your program. And you're trying to override mm -hmm. a subconscious with your effort. It's like, it's not gonna work really, it's not gonna work. So. See, that's why I don't practice. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's exactly what no. I mean, see, that's why I never ask you to practice anymore. <laughs> anymore. <laughs> so. So, uh, and what, so what do we do to get over those? <clears throat> well, you can say. rewrite the program. Yeah. First, you have to identify the program. Is it the psyche? Well, there, there's many different, it's yeah. called energy psychology, mm -hmm. a whole bunch of modalities on my mm -hmm. website, mm -hmm. brucelipton.com. Under resources, about 25 or more of these energy psychology processes, super learning. And it opens up a, like a super learning moment in your life where you can download a new program. And it's like life saving. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. Life saving. Mm -hmm. And people don't even know they've been programmed. Uh, but here's a, a fun part. Fun fact, like the movie, The Matrix, in the movie, the, uh, they say, well, if you take a blue pill, you wake up and everything's just the way it's always been. But if you take the red pill, you get out of the program. I said, well, what does that mean? And then I love it because I tell people, especially over 20 or so, you've already taken the red pill. They go, what? I said, when you fall in love, when you fall in love, you stop thinking. Mm. You stay mindful. Mm. Well, mindful means conscious mind's got the hands on the wheel. Mm. I'm not going back and playing a program. Mm. I said, well, conscious mind is wishes and desires. So I said, well, 24 hours after you fall in love, life is like, wow, heaven on earth, everything's beautiful, music, food, everything. I go, if your life sucked every day for years, you meet this person, 24 hours later, heaven on earth. I go, because you stopped playing the programs of limitation mm -hmm. and started operating from conscious creativity and wishes. Yeah, and you're in an uncharted territory. Love is very powerful. So you don't know where, Yeah, you just don't know. And that's, that's what I used to love about Osho. He would say to us, my job is to get you into chaos. And that's what he meant. He meant it to get out of your program, and that's where you'll be. That's where you'll find God or whatever you want to call yeah. it. That's when you're in the moment. That's when you've got your hands on the wheel. Uh, and this is also part of what the meditation is about. Mm. It stops the dialogue of the yeah. program yeah. that has been taking you down. It's like, I'm not good enough. Oh, my job isn't that good. I'm not making enough. I can't find a relationship in those thoughts. Mm. And I go, where are they coming from? I say, you're playing subconscious programs continuously. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, and then, of course, the resolution that's really important is you can rewrite the program. Because if you couldn't rewrite it, this would be a very sad story. Hey, I'm sorry, your life is screwed forever now. Yeah. You know? yeah. But no, you can rewrite yeah. the program. Yeah. Uh, and, and the problem is the conscious mind and the subconscious mind don't learn in the same way. So you can teach the conscious mind, which we all do, through creative means. Go to the concert, feel the vibes, conscious mind is taking it in, read a self-help book, go to a lecture, go to watch a video, just go, aha! Mm. And conscious mind being creative will change. Mm. The issue is subconscious mind is a habit mind. And by definition, if a habit could just change, it wouldn't be a habit. <laughs> so the subconscious mind resists change. Yeah. So you, once you've got program, it doesn't want to change the program. And it won't do it by wishing and desiring and studying all you want. That, that won't fix the conscious mind. It never touches the subconscious. So the difference is to get the subconscious to change, you have to find where the record button is mm -hmm. and push the record. Mm -hmm. And we've been blaming the subconscious for all the evil stuff. And I go, the subconscious is a cold machine. It makes a recording and now it's a program. And I go, now you got some good programs, you got some bad programs, but don't join the subconscious. I mean, when did we learn how to walk? Before we were two. Did you have to relearn how to walk? You know, she's young. She, <laughs> you and I have been around the pike here a bit. Yeah. I go, the same program, if I had to walk, yeah. it's been in there since two. Yeah. So um, it doesn't want to change. Mm. But, but you have to find out 
what the record button is for change. Uh, uh, uh. Mm -hmm. And that's where, again, where mantras come in, because our understanding of that way, where it's going to change is through meditation. And, the, and for us, the, the mantras are that key into, into that place of, mm -hmm. of no mind. Oh, absolutely. That's when you stop playing the program. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when you're in a meditation, mm -hmm. you're free for the first time of, yeah. I'm not playing a program. Yeah. And then the thoughts are very different mm -hmm. than the ones mm -hmm. when the subconscious is in control. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> Can I put a question? We've had a couple about 5G. One here saying, can you give some advice on how to appropriately overcome the vibration frequency of 5G? Okay, you ready? Ready. I'm ready. Start off with this. For years, everybody says you live under high tension power lines, and high tension power lines generate a field that causes cancer. Well, in fact, it does. But when they did the survey, not everybody gets cancer, it's only a percentage. So they had to figure out, well, if it just caused cancer, everybody would get the cancer. So what's the difference between those that got the cancer and those that didn't in the field? And the answer is this, stress. Mm. When you're under stress, your shield, your energy shield is perforated. Mm -hmm. In curly and photography, you can see that because you get those beautiful colors on the outside. But certain, when people are ill, there are pores mm -hmm. where the energy, the energy is not a complete shield mm -hmm. anymore. So it turns out when we're under stress, we perforate our protective shield. And that <coughs> allows things to come in. Can I walk through 5G? Of course you can. But you, you've got to not be under stress because stress is the, the mechanism that uh, breaks the shield down. Mm -hmm. uh, and in fact, uh, the issue is this. Over 90% of illness on this planet is not related to genes or anything like that. It's related 100% to the stress. Mm -hmm. uh, stress breaks down harmony in the system. It opens us up for things like 5G or so. Mm -hmm. But you can walk across hot coals, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. uh, but you got to have your consciousness intact. No stress mm -hmm. when you walk across that. Um, uh, one of the interesting ones is uh, uh, down south. In the U.S., they have these fundamentalists that work themselves up into a religious ecstasy, mm -hmm. and they start speaking in tongues and stuff like that. And they do something called testify. This is like totally amazing. Testify is your belief in God is so strong that you would do something no normal person in their right mind would ever think of doing. So they play with poisonous snakes. So those are snake handlers, right? They get bitten, but they don't have the same consequence most of the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the one I want to talk about is some of them drink strychnine poison in toxic doses in this state and have no adverse effects. Okay. Uh, and the fact is it, it doesn't come into the energy field. It can't come in if your field is intact. Yeah, that's amazing. That mm. reminds me of Ramdas' story about him giving uh, LSD to uh, Neem Karoli Baba. Yeah. And they said nothing happened. Mm. He, he was already there, you mm. know. It's like, mm. so what? I've yeah. got this. It's the way I live every day. So what, what's so hot, you know, about that? Mm. Yeah. And again, it's a, it's all level of consciousness, and this is what people don't recognize. Consciousness can. You can walk across the hot coals. You can drink the strychnine poison. Mm. There are many other different things, you know. That when I used to my lecture, one of them is real interesting. Is um, I show a weightlifter bulging muscles, sweat, and everything, lifting up a car. Yeah. And then I show them articles, young women, mothers, child is under the car, lift the car, no problem at all. Can hold a car for five minutes until neighbors can come and get the help and get the kid out from under the car. What was the point? If I said, okay, I'm going to go out and lift up a car, well, my personal belief system is no, I can't. Mm -hmm. Personal belief, I, you know, I lift things that's too heavy. Mm -hmm. uh, but when it comes to your child under the car, Belief changes. Belief changes. I am not letting my child stay under the car. And guess what? They can lift the car up without the bulging muscles or anything. And then it comes down to then, it's a belief issue. And, and then I say, well, how, what is belief? I go, it's everything. <laughs> because belief is your creation that we're doing. And, and, and so the, the beautiful part about this is you help people acquire an opportunity to have a different belief mm -hmm. when they're in a field 
of like-minded people that are not going into the fears and things of life. You get you stepped outside of the outside world mm -hmm. when you come into the mm -hmm. to the concert mm -hmm. because now you're in a, a community of harmony, mm -hmm. and harmony is a lot of energy, as you well know, as we mentioned mm -hmm. already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Uh, uh, this is the important thing. Am I afraid of 5G? Well, that's the first thing I just said was the problem. Am I afraid of 5G? Mm -hmm. Because that's a consciousness that says, it's going to threaten me. Mm -hmm. and, and the idea is, can I live with it? And I say, yes, but you can't be under stress. If you're under stress, probably. Mm -hmm. And most of us are in some way or another. Well, that's the nature of the world and we live in. That's the motivation to get people to go do something. Yeah. Oh God, I'm afraid, I gotta go do this. Yeah. And if it wasn't for that, we'd have a much more peaceful, harmonious world. Mm -hmm. But stress drives people. It's and then late. it kills people. Yeah, yeah. It's too late. You see, feel it's too late now. What, to change? Yeah. No, this is a beautiful part. I mean, even as I said, look, my first 40 years, my self-critical assessment prevented me from having any kind of relationship of, you know, worthiness of any kind. Until one day I started looking in the mirror and say, I like you. I had to look at that and say, I like you, but instead of looking in the mirror and going, oh, your nose is too big, your hair is falling out, you know, I got to look at all the negative things. But one day was, I like you. And I started to go that way. And once I, start, once I was able to like myself, because mm -hmm. I remember uh, yeah, I was always trying to find a partner, but I was really bad at it, okay? Not really good. And I kept looking, and I remember I was at this time in the Caribbean, uh, at a, um, a yacht club, uh, uh, I lived there, but I went to the yacht club and I met this young woman who was on our yacht just sailing around and I, I was so blessed by the universe because I had the perfect pickup line. We couldn't get a better one. I had a villa on the island, on the, on the beach and the, everything. It was beautiful and people to cook and everything. I was teaching at a university and, uh, and so I said to this woman, after talking for a while, I said, listen, if you want to stay, we, you know, I have this nice villa and you can stay here and hang out and do all this stuff. She looked at me and I paused waiting and she looked at me and she goes, you're too needy, I can't be here for you. And uh, in the moment of first shock. And then I, I, it was sort of like that slap in the face, it's right? It's a truthful moment. Right? Well, it was yeah. because I looked at her and I said, thank you. Mm -hmm. I needed to hear that. Yeah. Because when I walked home, I said, look, man, you got this great job, you work one or two days a week here, you live on a, on a villa on the coast and the beach and, and beautiful Grenada, uh, uh, you know, you got money in your pocket, your, your life is easy. Yeah. And I'm thinking, why can't you be happy here with yourself? Mm -hmm. That was the issue, mm -hmm. being happy with myself. Yeah. So I started to practice every day saying, look, hey, this is great, I'm happy and great. I kept repeating it, mm -hmm. okay? At some point, I was completely satisfied. Nobody else was there. Mm. That was the interesting turn of events because the moment I was completely satisfied, mm. then people were like, come out and like, oh, look for a relationship. No, I'm not, you know, I'm pretty good. <laughs> I don't need this, you know? But the idea was, um, she gave me that wake-up call. Mm. Why am I needy? Why do I need somebody? Mm. And, and I'll tell you what the problem is right away. Uh, it's actually related to chemistry, which is really cool because you can get an understanding. There's the periodic table of elements, all the chemistry, 108 different elements, okay? 108. I think it's 108 or 18, I'm not sure how many, okay? Something like that. Mm -hmm. Don't correct me, okay? <laughs> uh, and I say, well, what's interesting about it, I said, all of them make chemistry except one column on the edge called the noble gases. Uh, helium, krypton, xenon, argon, they don't make chemistry. Everything else, all the 100 other ones make chemistry. What was the difference? And here it is. For every proton in the nucleus, there's an electron surrounding it, okay? But they're called shells, and you can put so many electrons in a shell. If you don't fill up the shell, it wobbles. You have to fill up the shell, then it spins in perfect balance. So the point is this. Potassium has a wobble. Chlorine has a wobble, but a complementary wobble. So what's the point? They come together and create chemistry, so the wobble of one is canceled by the wobble of the other. It's called potassium chloride. I go, that's really cool. I go, but here's the problem. It's codependent relationship. <laughs> yeah. Because if the chlorine leaves, the potassium, <laughs> what's going on here, you know? 
Uh, and I say, and what about the noble gases? They're the only atoms that have the perfect number of electrons in their outer shell. They spin in perfect balance. Well, what's the relevance? I try to get people to understand. You can become a noble gas. And how is that? I say, if you can live free and independent and be happy, you can spin in perfect balance and all around you be crazy people, but you can stay in perfect balance, okay? So the other chemistry is codependency. I need you because your wobble helps me. That's codependency, okay? Noble gases, and when I first started going, I said, oh, poor noble gases, they, they don't get in a relationship. And then I realized something. A laser is noble gas in the tube, okay? Argon lasers, krypton lasers, okay? I said, well, what's unique? When you inject a photon of light and, and the noble gas captures the photon of light, it's enlightened mm -hmm. now. And guess what? It will seek another noble gas and make not a dimer two molecules. The name is, is great. Two noble gases that come together in that state is called an excitomer. <laughs> they get excited. And I say, what's the result of them coming together? They give off laser light. Mm. That's where laser light comes from, two noble gases. So the idea is this. Modeling ourselves is not to be wobbly, bad programming, that I need to have somebody else balance my wobble. No, you have to stay. If you don't, yeah. we're in trouble. Uh, sadomasochism. Yeah. I mean, it's totally weird, but yeah. the one who likes to beat up somebody yeah. is in a relationship with someone who wants to be beaten up. Why? Their wobbles come together. It's harmony for them. Mm. Okay? But a noble gas is great mm. because it spins on its own. Mm. It does not need a partner. Yeah. Mm. But if it becomes enlightened, yeah. it will seek a partnership. Mm. And that partnership, the excitomer, yeah. gives off the light. Yeah. You know, and, and that's that's what our destination is mm. become a noble gas, mm. spin in balance. Mm. Because if you're in balance, other people, no matter how wobbly they are, mm. cannot knock you off of your yeah. balance. Yeah. 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 And then you meet somebody else who's a noble gas, and and light comes forth from yeah. this relationship. That's what it's all about. Mm. Yeah, enlightenment. Mm. Enlightenment. That's what it is. So. Yeah. Oh. The noble gas song. <laughs> <laughs> There's a good song. I can feel the song coming. <laughs> wow, how about this, guys? Isn't it amazing? Are you having a good time with us? We hope you are. I think we are. Really uh, enjoying this chat. Um, we have time for one more. Do we have time for one more? Do There's we? something there, look. Hannah has three question minutes. There? <laughs> Hannah has one. There's a couple of comments. Uh, the question was, what about past trauma? Isn't it important to work through that instead of bypassing it? And then someone commented saying, you can't just deny past issues through positive thoughts and meditation. You can't? Well, they were commenting on that. So I think there was a sense of, they wanted to ask about that, basically. About past trauma? Yeah, yeah about, do you have to work through You have to, work work through to explain it. it in three minutes. Okay, and yes. very quickly, past trauma is what? It's a life experience that threw you out of balance. And it had to do generally with a program. So now it's lit up in your face. Look, I was out of balance. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been in a trauma in the first place. The idea is unless you change that program, that follows you wherever you're going to go. But once you change the program, you take the emotion out of things. Yeah. Yeah. And then you say, oh, yeah, that happened. But it's not bothering me anymore. Yeah. And then you could look at it and generally say, most of the time, it's an educational opportunity mm -hmm. to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Universe gives you this, deal with it. Mm -hmm. If you don't deal with it, you'll drag it forever. Yeah. Yeah. And if you understand, look, I was a participant in this program as well. Mm -hmm. It didn't happen by accident. I am a creator, so I have to look at my role in all of this as well. Yeah. And then you can let go of, of, the, of the tension that mounted from that. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't raised in a Christian tradition, but there are two very important Jesus quotes, the, to me as, not religion, but two important quotes. Mm -hmm. One of them is he told everybody, oh, the miracles that I do, you can do them better than I can do them, but you don't believe you can do it. That's, that's fact, it's profound. Yeah. You don't believe you can have it, then you can't have it, that's your problem, okay? Yeah. Yeah. But the one that I was coming to for this is, <clears throat> when uh, apparently the last thing he said while on the cross is, 
Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And I go back to the story of Bill. Bill plays this crap behavior, and everybody else can see it. And it could cause problems for people. But if you recognize Bill is playing that, not from his conscious, creative yeah. spirit mind, he's playing it from a program. I can't blame Bill. I can blame his program, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. But to come down on Bill, mm -hmm. he needs some, some help himself. Yeah. But the reality is I have to forgive him because I know Bill, the spirit, yeah. did not intend to do this. Bill, the program, yeah. did this. Yeah. And, and if you can let go of that, then yeah. all of a sudden you start to realize, well, they didn't do it personally. Yeah. They did it because of whatever way they grew up. Yeah. And they didn't even, like Bill, yeah. uh, I'm not anything like my father. Yeah. It's like, well, you just re replayed the program. Yeah. And so should I blame Bill for the program that his dad gave him? The answer is no. But if we were all aware that the programs exist, Bill has an opportunity to change the program. But if most people out there have no idea about yeah. the program. You know, that, that brings me to um, when we played in San Quentin prison you know there was a there was a a, a guy to, I was talking I mean I, all, everybody I met in there they were like monks to me and they were, one of them said uh, you know this is all about forgiveness this is what we're learning you know 25 30 years what I did was a terrible thing and the only thing that they have is to learn forgiveness of the, you know and yeah. because they, there's nothing else they knew they did it, and the, and the only way they're going to live is to find a way to forgive. And it's interesting because I've done uh, programs in uh, Canada uh, for prisoners, uh, but for indigenous people. 3% uh -huh. of Canada is um, uh, First Nation. 43% uh -huh. of the prison population is uh -huh. First Nation. Uh -huh. And the, in the problem is they were programmed to be disempowered. They were programmed, you're... Your uh, culture is the work of the devil. Your 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 parents are are sin makers and all that. And it's like kids getting this yeah. education blows up. Yeah. They can't live in harmony. They end up in yeah. in the prison. So yeah. we went there to do psyche, mm. and it was so amazing. And they did call themselves monks in the monastery, mm. and uh, and it was so powerful because once they had an opportunity to understand the program and an opportunity to rewrite the program. They were so empowered, yeah, of course. And, yeah. and and to be honest, uh, I would have taken all those people home with me. Yeah. I had yeah. no concern that they were evil in any sense of the yeah. word. It yeah. was yeah. real important. Mm. Wow! And thank you, Bruce. My God, oh. you just uh, lifted the field here totally, and uh, I hope we can do the same for you tonight at the concert. <laughs> oh, you guys are so wonderful! I'm looking so forward to it. This is my holiday to go to the concert, to free up and That's and great. to sing. And I love it because my voice really sucks, you know. Oh, really? Okay. But when you get a lot of people singing at the same time. It blends somehow. Absolutely. And, and you don't have to be Pavarotti to sing. No, and, it, and it's fun because the moment I could let go of not hearing my own voice, it, it changed the whole Great. meaning of being there. Fantastic. Mm. Yeah. Fantastic. Thanks, man. Thank nice you. Day. you know, Thank you so, both so very much for what you do mm. for our world. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mm. What a nice meeting. Have a beautiful day, night, wherever you are. And thank you so much for joining mm -hmm. us. This was so beautiful. And see you down the road. Namaste. Mm -hmm. Namaste. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.